Okay. Uh, good morning or good evening or whatever time it is for you um, today. I uh, just wanted to um, first uh, point out that we have updated the agenda for the training series. Um, so uh, going to the agenda this week um, is session 10 and we're going to be talking about stat analysis and series analysis. Um, next week on February 22nd, we're going to um, be uh, doing some training in preparation for our release that's coming out um, in early April or early March, excuse me. And so we will be um, going through how to do installs. Um, Julie Prestopnik has volunteered to, to go ahead and, and um, show you how to do that. Um, the week of March 1st, it will talk about um, tropical cyclones um, and uh, evaluation of that and um, extend that into being able to um, track um, features such as tropical cyclones and, and do evaluation or, or diagnostics. Um, and then we, the rest of the, um, the schedule is tentative, uh, but uh, we, we feel that we do have a, a general plan of attack here. So um, week of March 8th, it will um, be um, going over what, what is going to be included or what is included in the MET Plus version 1.4.1.0 uh, release, as well as um, talking about ensemble stat. Um, the week of the 15th, March 15th, we'll go over um, the new Gen Ons Prod tool that um, uh, allows you to um, do basic um, ensemble product generation and then um, evaluating probabilities. We will have no session March 22nd. Um, many of us have uh, students that are on spring break, and so we, we're going to be taking advantage of, of our spring break. And then the um, last week of March is when we will do the demo of setting up um, MetPlus on real data um, in, on the cloud on Amazon Web Service. So that just gives you a little bit of an overview of, of what we're going to be um, covering uh, through March. And then um, we will have um, four more sessions in April um, to cover some, some of the more advanced topics. We'll get that um, schedule laid out um, shortly. Okay, so then let's go ahead and, and close that out and start um, learning about stat analysis. Yeah. Okay, so stat analysis um, is uh, one of our analysis tools. You can see here that it's in the, um, in the analysis stack. Um, it's highlighted in yellow. Uh, it takes output from um, uh, a couple of the um, tools that uh, just do processing. So GSI tools, which uh, GSI is grid, um, grid point statistical interpolation um, uh, data assimilation tools. Uh, we have um, a tool that reads the uh, output from GSI, um, generates uh, forecast and, and OBS matched pairs, um, and that will um, uh, be passed into stat analysis as well as the, the output from point stat, ensemble stat, grid stat, and wavelet stat. Um, its input files are the met.stat files. Um, and it does have an ASCII configuration file that you can use. It's optional, you don't have to use it. You can do everything on the command line if you really want to. Um, and then the output um, is also the met.stat file. So basically it's taking in um, information and then um, computing statistics and, and doing some additional um, filtering possibly and then writing out .stat files again. So um, there are several types of jobs that stat analysis can perform. Um, it can uh, look in a, a directory full of, of uh, MET output, um, and it could filter that output um, in order for you to be able to um, possibly do some debugging or do some um, additional analysis um, in a, without um, the MET tools, if you wish. There's a summary capability um, that computes um, for a given um, uh, uh, column of, of data, um, the mean and standard deviation and, and um, all the, the basic information about the, the um, distribution of the data, including interquartile range and um, the range. It also computes um, the WMO statistics. 
Um, so if you, if you need to get the WMO statistics out, you can use the summary um, option. There's two ways to, um, to compute statistics over um, uh, multiple time periods or over multiple um, regions um, and so forth. That, that's the aggregate and the aggregate stat um, options. Um, we do have um, a generic numerical weather prediction um, skill score index um, and then a more uh, focused one um, that is uh, called the GO index that is um, primarily used by the Air Force, but um, is a good example of how you, you might be able to um, construct an a, um, NWP index. And then we um, do have the, uh, uh, um, the ability um, in match, if you pass in matched pair data, to look for ramp events. Um, this was originally designed for tropical cyclone rapid intensification. We then saw that it could be applied to um, you know, renewable energy, but it really is just a rapid change in some value um, over a given uh, amount of time. And, and then you can um, look for that event and then um, pass it into um, contingency tables for computing um, categorical statistics. So here's the usage for stat analysis. Um, you, you call the tool, you tell it what directory or path you want it to look in. Um, and then uh, optional is you can um, tell it where you want it to write the data, um, where you want to store the, the temporary data that's needed um, in order to compute the, the statistics and the verbosity level. You can, um, as I said, either pass in a configuration file um, with a lot of the information, or you use the dash job option if you're doing this on the command line. And then you tell it what kind of job you want it to, to perform, the, the ones that I just went over in the previous slide. So filtering or summary, aggregating, aggregate stat, go index, um, SS index, or ramp. Um, so the, as I pointed out, there's two different types of aggregation. Um, um, just trying to aggregate the, um, the uh, scores and use the exact same line type, then you would tell it to aggregate. Um, so for example, if you are um, trying to um, aggregate the spread skill variance um, line type and um, just have it generate the spread skill variance line type again, um, then you would use the, the aggregate um, option. If you are trying to go from um, you know, more basic um, uh, option statistics such as contingency table counts or the partial sums for continuous statistics or the probabil probabilistic contingency table um, and so forth, and then um, have it derive um, the statistics, the um, things like categorical statistics and continuous statistics and wind um, statistics and so forth, then you would have to use the aggregate stat um, job option. And here, um, down here is a list of um, what, uh, which line type you would start with and what you could ask it to compute for each of those given line types. And this is how you would go from if you, if you have matched pair, if you wrote out the matched pair and you want to um, compute uh, statistics, you, you can do that using um, the uh, stat analysis um, line type matched pair and then go over to any of the statistics. Um, so, and then there are lots of different ways of, of stratifying the data and filtering the data and, um, and um, they, all of these are job options that you would put after you tell it what um, job type you want it to um, perform. Um, so it can filter on any of the, the um, header columns that are available. Um, so model or description, um, you know, the, the forecast and the ops variables or the levels, the masking regions, the line types and so forth. Um, you can pass in um, multiple um, uh, headers that you want it to um, filter on. Um, and you can also um, you know, bound the times based on the, um, the forecast or the obs init or valid times, um, the beginnings and ends and so forth. Um, you can also um, have it look for specific strings. Um, for example, if you are only looking for a couple of different stations, um, you, you could pass in um, dash column string, um, say obs station ID, and then um, tell it um, what uh, stations you would like to, um, to uh, aggregate or filter on. 
Um, same thing, uh, if you are wanting to only look at particular thresholds, you could pass in um, the dash column thresh, tell it that um, you're looking for forecasts greater than 273. Um, and and um, in this case, you're um, performing the, the analysis on the match pair records. If you're filtering and you want um, that, that data to be written out to a file rather than just out to the screen, you can use the um, dash dump row um, to write the, the lines um, to an output file. If uh, you are writing the, um, if you want to write the statistics line types um, out to a, a full file um, and you're not using um, the dash out option in the command line, um, you can use uh, the dash out stat um, job option to, to do the same thing, to write it out to um, the stat line type. And then um, there is a, a way to um, override um, any of the, the data that is in the output header columns. So say, for instance, you didn't um, put in a description when you were running um, your uh, your statistics, but now you would like to, um, you know, apply a description to a particular suite of statistics. Um, say, for instance, all of the all of um, the data in one directory is for the spring season or something like that. You could use the dash set header um, and then uh, tell it what um, column and then what you want it to um, to say um, in that column. So there's a, that's just um, some of the examples of job options. There's um, actually even more. Um, I, I highly recommend you um, look through the, the MET user's uh, manual in order to um, see what all you can do with uh, stat analysis. So um, here's an example of, of running just um, uh, two jobs. Um, you want to filter the data and then you want to aggregate from um, category, uh, contingency table counts to contingency table counts. And so it's, um, you see here it's dash job, filter, dash line type, CTC, dash dump row. Um, it dumps all the information that um, our uh, CTC line um, data into a particular file. And then if you wanted to aggregate, um, same thing, dash aggregate, line type, dump row, and, and so forth. Um, this is what it looks like if you were using the, the config file instead. Um, you, once again, um, the config file and, and what the jobs would look like in the config file, or this is what it would look like if you just run it on the command line. So you notice that um, a lot of it is repeated, but then all the information that is um, further up in the config file is also um, listed in the command line. So the forecast bar is, is Ugrid. That relates to um, what you see here, um, the dash VX mask are the masking regions. That's what you see there. Um, the interpolation method you have here is dash interpret method. Um, and this just kind of demonstrates the difference between aggregate. And um, next I'll, I'll uh, have a, a, an example of aggregate stats. So um, in this case, once again, we're just trying to aggregate over the, the two um, say there's only two records for contingency table count, and we're um, trying to aggregate over two regions. Um, the uh, region uh, DTC-165, which is basically the eastern part of the U.S. DTC-166 is the western part of the U.S. And we have the contingency table counts, um, and this is what they would look like if you're kind of thinking about it in a table format. If you aggregate them, basically, um, if you go back and, and count up 32, plus 24 is 56, 43 plus 104 is 147, and so forth and so on. So basically all, all it's done is it's summed up over those um, contingency table counts. Um, this is an example of using basically the same data, but then um, instead of saying aggreg aggregate stat. Um, so what it does is it, it sums up the, the data across those two columns, and then it computes all of the um, statistics, the, the uh, categorical statistics like um, bi frequency bias and base rate and probability of detection and so forth. Um, so you can see that here. Um, here's an example, once again, of, of running um, the summary job. Um, and this is, these are the, um, the columns that are written out. 
Um, a very, very powerful option um, in uh, stat analysis is using the buy option. Um, because what that does is it, it um, does additional um, uh, stratification and you can get statistics um, for lots of different um, uh, uh, columns, basically. So um, in this case, say for instance, you wanted to um, to compute statistics over all the, the different stations, um, you know, uh, observing stations, then you could um, pass in after you tell it what job you want it to do and, you know, what line types you want it to um, aggregate um, and, and um, write out, you know, which statistic. You could say by station ID and then what it will do is it will do, it'll go through and, and um, filter by station ID and then commute, compute just for um, each one of the station IDs separately. Um, or if you wanted to, um, you know, uh, if you have a directory with a lot of different forecast variables and forecast levels, then you can use the dash by forecast var, var um, by forecast level. Um, here is uh, the example of the Go index running that. Um, and it's, um, it is required to tell it what model forecast you want it to um, use and then what the reference for, um, model is that you want it to use. Um, and it, this uh, here shows you the, the weighting for the Go index. So basically um, you would have to have in your, um, in your output that you're trying to compute the, the Go index for, you'd have to have wind speed at um, four different levels, dew point at four different levels, temperature at two, um, the 400 millibar height and mean sea level pressure. And you would um, have to have computed um, uh, the, the statistics, um, the root mean square values um, at lead times 12, 24, 36, and 48. So you, you have to have a fairly rich data set in order to compute the, the GO index. And then these are the weightings that are applied. Um, here's uh, what a ramp uh, looks like. And, and once again, the example I have here is for um, tropical cyclone intensity, but it, it's applicable also to um, renewable energy. So say for instance, you have a, a, a particular change in time um, specified over a, a particular time range, um, say like 24 hours or something like that. And um, you, uh, and if it is observed and it's forecasted, then um, it's possible that that could be a hit. Um, but in this case, it's a miss because it's offset by a little bit of time. So what we've done is we've also built in flexibility of the event definition. So um, say for instance, you, you feel that it's okay to, to identify the, the event, um, but, you, uh, but, it's, uh, but it, it, it may, it's okay if it, it happens um, 12 hours different, um, you know, the onset um, happens 12 hours different or 18 hours or something like that. So there is the ability to specify that as well. Um, and then once you have the events identified, um, and, and you can only use a um, matched pair for um, identifying these ramp events, then you can um, pass that into, um, into uh, sound analysis again to compute categorical statistics. So things like renewable energy ramps, solar wind um, events, changes in the magnetic field, changes in temperature, and so forth. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to um, put these up and show you that, that um, there are in the PowerPoint some examples of, of how to, um, you know, uh, compute statistics for up ramps and down ramps. And I believe that is the whirlwind tour of stat analysis. Yes, it is. Um, while I'm transitioning over to doing the hands-on, um, maybe if there's any questions in the chat, if uh, someone wants to... Um, uh, cover, let us know what, what some of those questions are. Were there any questions? Sorry that that was very quick. Is there a reference for um, the GO index why 400 um, hectopascals is used? Um, I, I, I'm not sure that there is a reference. Although maybe there is, um, maybe John, is she, can, can you um, answer that while I'm switching screens? Sure. Um, so the GO index is uh, created by the United States Air Force. 
and I don't uh, I, I I don't know if there's a published paper describing the reasoning for it. Um, they funded us to add support for this, but when we did, um, we did it as a special case of the more generic NWP index. So um, you, you actually users have the ability to create their own stat analysis configuration file where they define the uh, the variables, levels, statistics, and weights um, to construct their own index. So um, in for this, I, I, can't, I can't remember if it's for Met version 10.1 that we're working on now or for 10.0. There's another index in there called the CVS index, which is a variation of the, or, you know, a diff, slightly modified uh, definition of the Go index. So um, both of these are special cases of the more generic NWP index. Yeah, that that's in 10.1. Um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, 10.1. So Met Plus. 4.1, which will be released in, in April or in March. Sorry. Um, Evan, uh, your question is stat analysis can compute all these statistics with respect to the forecast lead time. Um, yes, you can, you can, um, especially if you use the dash by option, you could have it, um, you know, stratified by each one of the of the leads um, and um, it once again it's it's, uh, it's a very powerful tool and it's nice because it can be run on the command line okay so um, now I'm going to show you how to run stat analysis just using the um, using Met plus so if, if you go ahead and, and go to um, session three analysis tools we added this um, for this training series, we pulled out some of the analysis tools that were buried in um, some of the, the examples and, and have elevated it up to its own session. Um, if you want to, you can go over the, the stat analysis and just see how to run it um, by hand. I'm just going to show you how to run it using Met Plus. So um, as per usual, uh, make sure that you have um, your uh, tutorial settings um, set, and um, we're just going to go ahead and, and change the directory um, into the into the Met Plus tutorial. And then let's go ahead and, and review um, one of the use cases that is already available in Met Plus. And you'll notice here that um, the you know process list says stat analysis. Um, you know, some of the interesting things we're using, some of the, the, um, the test data for grid stat. Um, here is, uh, uh, it, you know, you can um, specify the verbosity level if you want to increase the verbosity. Um, here we have stat analysis um, job name. In this case, we're, we're just going to demonstrate filtering the data and then um, dumping it out to a, a file. And you notice that um, we have dash dump row and then um, we, we are going to use environment var variables to tell it where to dump the, um, the data that's further down in the file. You'll also notice that there are um, a lot of different um, options for filtering. And so you can set whichever ones of these that you would like. Um, so Forecast valid hour list um, and and um, the uh, in it hours um, are set for right now. Um, the group list uh, basically gives you um, a list of items that um, you might want to have grouped together for uh, for um, aggregating the the statistics. And then the loop list um, uh, specifies um, what you uh, what you would like MetPlus to to loop over. Um, and right now, it's not really the easiest to, to um, really understand um, the, the loop list, other than um, you know the forecast valid hour list um, here is uh, set to twelve. If this if this had um, you know a comma and and say for instance had twenty four, then it would loop over um, the valid hour twelve, and then um, loop over uh, or I guess eighteen loop over the valid hour eighteen and so forth. Um, loop list items, you need to have at least one entry um, in, in um, the loop list items. And then if you scroll further down, you can see um, the directories are set up as well as um, the dump row um, template for where to, to dump the, the statistics. So let's go ahead and, and uh, run that case.
Did I miss? Oh, I missed an R. Sorry about that. Cancel. It's still a copy paste. And you can see that it actually runs fairly quickly. Um, it, what it does is it um, uh, produces out to the screen. Um, it shows you um, what the settings were that it's trying to run. Um, and, uh, and then it, you know, it, it says that you, uh, you have run successfully. Um, and let's go ahead and, and look at the outputs. So um, right here, it tells you where it, um, what uh, configuration file it used, and then it, it tells you where it, it wrote the final um, conf, and it, um, this is also where the output is going to be. So just really quick, let's go ahead and, and show you what the directory looks like. So here you can see that there's logs, you have the, the final configuration, which um, tells you exactly what was passed into MET+. Plus. Um, in this case, um, because of how the dump row um, uh, template was set up, it's writing the data to stat analysis. And then this is where the temp directory is. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and copy and paste um, the uh, command to, to uh, look at the data. Now, if you look at this, it's really kind of hard to, um, to look at because there's so much information. But if um, in VI mode, um, if you um, uh, click on, or if you um, use the colon and then type set and no wrap, then suddenly you wind up with, um, you know, data that you can actually look at. So you can see here that Um, you have all the, the header information, um, and uh, you'll notice that there's a, a lot of different verification masks in, in um, the data, um, as well as um, lots of different thresholds, um, and uh, um, a lot of different um, forecast variables and, and so forth. So um, it ran successfully, and what it did was it just filtered out all of the um, all of the information and, and put it all into one file. Um, so the other thing that uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could um, you know look at the log file to see how the command was built. So let's go ahead and and um, look at this log file, which is listed right here. So we're gonna go ahead and and look at the the file that was written out. Um, it, you know, includes a lot of the, the, the same information that was written out to the screen. But you can come and, and look at um, where it says command and see what was, um, what was uh, um, you know, uh, written or what, how the command was formulated. So um, in essence, it's, it, this is um, part of the command and then it, it shows you what job um, it's, it's working on. And um, so this um, lets you understand how that plus is building that job um, uh, filter, or excuse me, that job uh, listing and, and um, you know, what it's trying to do. So let's go ahead and quit out of there. And um, now let's um, copy the config file and do a little bit of editing. So I'm copying um, the config file over to um, into the the MetPlus tutorial directory user config. I'm just going to call it run two. And uh, let's go ahead and edit that as well. And um, here you'll you'll see I, I'm suggesting that we change um, the analysis job to aggregate stat, stat and that we write the um, that we're going from contingency table counts to um, uh, categorical statistics um, that we're going to aggregate over two different um, regions 
once again, the, the um, eastern conus and the western conus. Um, and uh, I know that there are um, at least two different thresholds included in the output. Um, and uh, because it, it won't want to necessarily um, aggregate over those two different thresholds, we're going to add OBS thresh list to the loop list items um, so that it, it loops over greater than um, 300 um, Kelvin and, and less than um, 300 Kelvin. And let's go up. Get rid of the dump row file. Come down here. And for masking regions. And for uh, uh, for thresholds, where then where then are equal to three hundred. What? Less than 300. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run. And I'm overriding and writing to the um, stat analysis run to directory. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and look at the directory. You'll notice that um, uh, there is only logs and temp, and there's no um, directory called stat analysis. What happened? Where did that go? Um, basically, when we defined um, the stat analysis um, job arguments, um, we did not define that we wanted um, the output statistics to be written to its own separate um, file. Um, and so what it did was it just wrote it to the log file. So if we go ahead and, and look at this log file, here we go. And scroll down through it. You can see here that um, the the statistics, the cat categorical statistics were written to the log file. So um, basically, if we um, if we go ahead and I'm just going to edit that same configuration file and come down and and in the um, line type um, arguments, if I add out stat and um, it, it, I'm just going to write it to to the same um, file that's already defined for um, dump for uh, if you were dumping rows. So. Um, so, let's see. Um, row file. We're just going to run it again. Um, instead, I'm going to write it, write it to run three to a different directory. And if, if you um, look at that directory, you'll see that you have now been able to write it out to a, the, um, to a .stat file. Anyway, um, so uh, that is uh, just an example of how to run stat analysis using the plus. 
Um, at this point, I'm going to um, transition and, and over to John HG to introduce series analysis. So John, do you want to go ahead and, and start sharing? Sure. Do we have any questions while he's transitioning? Okay, Tara, can you confirm that you can see my slides? Yes, I can confirm that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good morning. So I'm John Halley Goutway, um, talking about the series analysis tool. So fortunately, I think this one is a lot simpler than the stat analysis tool. Um, we say, when we say analysis, we basically mean tools that um, produce results through time. I guess that doesn't apply consistently across all the tools, but that's why we're, we're talking about stat analysis to group the output um, from individual runs of point stat and grid stat, for example, through time. Series analysis also produces results through time. So here we are on at this column of uh, of the of the flow chart, and um, I want to point out that series analysis is a lot like grid stat in that it does grid to grid comparisons. Um, point stat does grid compares gridded forecast to point observations, um, but both of those tools, grid stat and point stat, are run once per output time. And you get results for each output time, and then you aggregate them with stat analysis. Um, whereas with series analysis, um, we compute stats aggregated through time for each point in the grid. So instead of um, aggregating, you know, point set and grid set aggregate in space, series analysis aggregates through time. Here's the um, command or the the usage statement for series analysis. Um, you define the input forecast files and observation files. So typically, you know, this if your uh, your your forecast files files are a uh, typically like a gridded NWP model output. Your observations may be uh, it could be another another model source of model output. It could be uh, analysis, um, gridded analysis, and so the forecast files and ops file files can either be provided directly on the command line or can be written to an ASCII file list. So basically just an ASCII file that contains a list of files. And you would you can provide that as the as the option for dash forecast and dash ops. The dash both option is used when both the forecast and observation data live in the same file. Um, for example, one of the outputs of grid stat is a netcdf match pairs file that contains both forecast and observation data. So in your workflow, if you have run grid stat already and produced this, written out this netcf match pairs file, you could use that output as input to series analysis. Um, I'll talk more about the dash paired option in a moment. Um, the dash out file is required, and it basically is the name of the out, netcf output file you want to create. And uh, the configuration file is also required and specified there. Um, and then we have the dash v and log logging level and the dash log output log file options uh, that are that are in all the other tools. So the dash paired option means that data from the nth forecast file matches data from the nth observation file. So series analysis has logic in it that you know if we if we're looping over the forecast files and we find forecast data for a particular time, the tool goes off and hunts through all the op all the input observation files looking for matching data. Um, if you've already gone through this, you know, if you've already provided the input files in the right order, uh, meaning that you've already paired them up, then use the dash paired option to simplify the processing logic. It'll run, series analysis will run faster that way. So what are the inputs? Well, it's really any gridded data file format that um, the MET tool supports, like GRIB1 and GRIB2. Um, the few different flavors of NetCDF that we support. Um, we can also use uh, the, the Python embedding option. And if you're doing that, um, I, I provided a link here to the met Python input arc. So that, that link takes you to the user's guide where we discuss that. Um, that's useful to know about if using Python embedding with series analysis. Um, and the obviously, you have an input ASCII configuration file. And the output is a NetCDF file containing one or more statistics computed for each grid point. So um, I want to emphasize here that each run of series analysis um, computes statistics 
for one and only one series at a time. Um, you can define that we usually run it to define a time series of data. So we're reading the same field from multiple input files. However, you can actually configure it so that you read different fields from the same input file. So for example, you could um, look at multiple pressure levels um, and define your series that way. Um, so in this example here, I'm just showing a time series of uh, forecasted forecast three hour accumulated precipitation against some analysis data. So this is the type of data over that you'd use for running series analysis. So um, if we were setting up a run, a configuration file for that data, um, let's see, we have net we have net CDF data for both the forecast and OB. So in here, you might set the uh, the forecast dictionary. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to skim over the details of the configuration file because we really want to emphasize using Met Plus for configuring this. Um, but you'll notice this star comma star notation, which is useful for net CDF data. You can see in the cat thresh, I'm choosing, I'm interested in thresholds of um, 0.1 inch and, and uh, 0.01 inch and 0.1 inch of precipitation. Um, there is an option to mask the data, in, um, but really all that's doing is restricting the number of grid points for which are computing statistics. Um, one important thing to know about is the block size. So basically this is the number of grid points that you're telling the tool to, for which you would like the tool to compute statistics at a single time. And the reason why we provide this is because if you have a very dense grid or a very long time series, we try to hold all that data in memory at once, you may run out of memory. So this is basically the knob to turn to enable you to um, you know, control how much memory is used. Um, it's important to know the output stats entry of the config file. You'll see here, if you if you recall with point set and grid stat, um, these mnemonics like FHO, CTC, CTS, those were the name of output line types that you could turn on or off. Um, we use the same terminology here in series analysis, but instead of line type turning line types on and off, you are requesting specific statistics to, to be output. If you wrote all all statistics available, all possible statistics, your NetCF output file would be quite large. So instead, we uh, have you pick out the the statistics you want, and the strings you provide are the same as the column names of the of those output line types. So, yeah, great. So here's an example of what it might look like when you run. Um, you know, we're just we we've written. Uh, the list of NAM forecast files for the summer to a uh, an ASCII file of that name and the stage two observation files to an ASCII file of uh, the similar name. We provided those file lists on the command line. We're uh, passing in our configuration file and we, we've chosen a descriptive, descriptive name for a NetCDF output file. And you see this, if you squint your eyes, you'll see that we're processing data pass number one, data pass number two, all the way through 10. So because our grid is uh, has has is relatively dense, um, our block size of 100,000 grid points requires 10 passes through the data, which is slow. Um, and in, when I ran this several years ago, it took approximately 30 minutes on my machine at that time. So if you increase the block size, then you won't we won't have to loop through the data as much or at all, and it'll run faster. So in fact, in MET version 10.1, we've, we've added an option so that the block size is set less than or equal to zero. We just default to the processing all the grid points in the input domain. The NetCF output file contains variables for each of the statistics that have been requested. And they follow this sort of naming convention where you have, they begin with the word series. Then they have a, the line type identifier. So CTS is a contingency table statistics line type. And followed by the name of the statistic that uh, the variable contains, like for example, GSS is Gilbert skill score. And then if a threshold was applied to compute it, the threshold is also included there in the variable name. So what is the what does this output look like? Well, the total column, let's see, it, we go up from the, the pink values here. You probably can't see this uh, from where you are. Uh, the, the, the maximum value in the plot is 92. So the grid points that have a pink or are, are, are plotted in pink have the full time series of data available to uh, at, at that point. And the ones that are you know red have something less than 92. I always encourage people to dump out the total count as one of the statistics, just to make sure that you're looking at statistics 
computed over the number of uh, data points you expect. Um, this is what the base rate looks like for on the left, it's our lower threshold on the right, it's our higher threshold. You can see that there's a lot of precipitation incurred, occurring in Florida. Um, here is the frequency bias. So in this case, a value greater than one indicates that the forecast is over predicting the event, less than one is an under, predict, um, under predicting the event relative to observations. Here's Gilbert, uh, a map of Gilbert's skill score, the Hansen Kuipers discriminant, uh, Heidke skill score. And I don't, I don't have uh, a much interpretation of these results, but the whole idea of this is basically to see how your model performs in a spatial sense. So is there one portion of the, of the grid over which uh, your model performs better than other regions? Here's an example of where we applied this to a different data set, uh, a GFS, uh, GF, comparison of GFS outputs, looking at six hour accumulated precipitation. Uh, the mean error is shown here. And on average over our time series, you know, the mean errors are close to, or, you know, somewhat above or below zero. You can also look at the 90th percentile of the error, which is um, much higher, uh, closer towards the maximum value of 12.7, or the 10th percentile of the error, um, which obviously is closer to our the negative 12.7. So the error really is just the forecast minus the observation value at each grid point. Uh, and then a last example here of where we've we've applied series analysis to some total electron count data, um, and this is the Gilbert Skill Score for uh, three different thresholds um, over the globe. And then I think we also have a slide that shows the base rate as well, because whenever you're looking at the Gilbert skill score, you should also look at the base rate at the same time. So just some example outputs from series analysis. And that's the end of my slides. Are there any questions about the series analysis tool? Okay, with that, I will hand it over to John Opatz to work through the practical exercises. Thanks, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna run through a quick demonstration of the MET Plus uh, version of series analysis and show you how that all works out. I'll just be sharing a terminal window and bouncing through the various um, output that you can see through there. And this will ultimately just follow the use case that's currently set up under the, um, the tutorial online as well. So let me pull up a window and share that all for you. There we are. So as you can see from the window, um, I've already sourced my MET Plus tutorial setup um, shell script. So everything should be set. Um, if we take a look in the series analysis, now this is the basic series analysis configuration file. Uh, well, it would help if I put an L in front of that. Um, so there's not going to be a lot of um, special things. There's not going to be a lot of, um, there's going to be no Python embedding in this. Um, but this will give you a very good grasp of what the series analysis tool looks like when it runs properly um, at its bare bones. And it'll get you that good imagery that a lot of people really expect or want um, from MET+. Plus. Um, so I want to draw your attention to a few things. The first is that the initialization times here are set, the begin and end are set to the same time with an increment of 12 hours, which means that as soon as this increments once, we're done. Um, so this will only process one initialization time. But if we go down to lead sequence, we can see that there's three different sequences times, the 12 hour, a nine hour, and a six hour. Um, so from here, your 2005, 08, 07, uh, starting at zero Z, um, you're going to advance it by 12 hours, you're going to advance it by nine hours, and you're going to advance it by six hours um, to find your valid times. Um, so ultimately, your lead sequence is what's going to control um, the looping in this one. That's how you're going to get your, uh, your series setting up across time. If we go down a little bit, um, we can see that we're expecting the total, the RMSE, the F bar, and the O bar. As Johnny G just mentioned, um, it's always a good idea to put total in there. Um, that's a great way to make sure that your entire time series is making it in. If you get any less than what you expected, it's a good idea to go through and figure out where those things are falling out. Um, right now, another uh, good thing to note is that series analysis block size is not set. We're going to see that 
because we don't do that, it defaults to 1024 as a block size, which could impact your runtime very significantly. And then as we scroll down, we'll see that we're actually looking for um, the accumulated precip across three hours, comparing it to the accumulated precip of three hours. Um, the first one looks to be a grib file. Um, and then your second file, since we are using those asterisk notations, we are looking at a NetCDF for your observation data set. Now, both of them are setting up for several different thresholds, but because as we go down, oh, I guess up here, um, because we're not requesting a uh, continuous or the categorical statistics, we're just doing continuous st statistics, we're not actually going to be using any of those categories. Um, we're just going to be getting the, the entire RMSE at each grid point and the entire FRO bar for each grid point. So um, let's quick jump out of there and um, let's get this running. So we'll pound in this command. Um, again, just running that plus, passing in um, your configuration file, uh, passing in the tutorial configuration file, and then telling it where you'd like it to go. Now, again, the important thing to watch here is just note that it does take some time, and that's because your valid thresh, um, or your block size, rather, wasn't set. Um, and that I know in the in the current speed, it was like, wow, that was like not even three seconds. That's true. But as your use case gets much larger, that's going to be a bigger issue. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the output since we did get a confirmation here that MetPlus has successfully finished running. And we see several files. The one I want to pull your attention to is this one. Um, so don't worry about the PNG EPS. That's something I did earlier this morning. I'll show you how to create those in a minute. Um, the one I want to show you is this, the 2005080700 underscore SANC. That's your NetCDF output um, from your series analysis run. So if we CD into that file, or at least into that directory, it'll be a little bit easier to look at this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do an NC dump of that file to give you an idea of the contents associated with that. So again, we get a plethora of information um, of what's in here. But the important things are, first of all, making sure that your latitude and longitude are somewhere near um, the dimensions that you thought they were going to be in terms of your input forecast and observation files. Um, and also, the important things to see here is that we are getting those um, variables that we asked for. We asked for total, we asked for RMSE, we asked for F bar, and we asked for O bar. And of course, that has the prefix of C and T to let you know what line type this is coming out of. So everything appears to be okay. Um, as John mentioned, Johnny Chi mentioned before, though, um, it's always a good idea to figure out if your totals match up to what you expect. So I'm going to do a quick NC view of this file, and I'm going to switch over. Um, in this presentation, so you can actually see that window. So you'll see in this one, we get um, several entry here. We get a total, we get the RMSE, the F bar, the O bar. Let's go ahead and take a look at the total. Again, it looks like that's not going to share. That's all right. I will. Switch over to that one. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see the uh, the scale on this, but it did alert me as soon as I opened this that, hey, everything on your map appears to be three, um, which is great because as we saw in the configuration file, there were only three lead sequences that we put in. So we expect three times to come out of that. Um, and that's what we're seeing across this. Red is three on the scale. So everything appears to be fine, um, at least for uh, what we expect for that time series. And we'll stop presenting there. So um, with that, there is another file I'd like to show you as soon as I share my screen. There we are. 
Okay, so as you saw before, there were also some additional files. These other two files are also produced by MetPlus series analysis outputs, the forecast files and the OBS files. Um, if we take a look at the forecast files file with the VI command, we'll see that at the top it tells us it's a file list, and then it has three different files that were read in. If you go back to the configuration file, which we could do in a minute, um, you'll see that these options were controlled by our input command, the directory template, or the file template and the directory structure. Um, so let's take a quick look back for that. All right, oh, again with that missing L. All right, so as we scroll down, we'll go to the file input output. If it's here, where I might be missing it. OK, so there's your um, forecast series analysis input directory. Um, we see that we're going to the input base, met test data sample forecast. Um, but the important part that I want to draw your attention to is this, um, where we're actually controlling each loop um, of series analysis or each call of series analysis by an initialization time, which, as we saw at the top, doesn't change. So ultimately, the lead um, command here, where we're grabbing a two hour, again, the 12, 6, and I believe the 3, um, is what was changing every, or 12, 9, and 6. Yep, 12, 9, and 6. So those will be substituted in each time. So when you look through your forecast files and OBS files, that, those two files that are output by series analysis, you should expect to see each of those files in that list. Um, and again, it's just being replaced by this option here and your input directory up here. And likewise, for the um, for your OBS, it'll be in the same same thing, just for the different variable. And then finally, uh, a lot of times, oh, uh, let's take a quick look. We do have enough time, so I will quickly jump into the log file here, um, we'll see that this was run three times. So let's quickly take a look in this log file because I want to show um, where there was a room for improvement in this run. Again, you get a plethora of information here about how MetPlus was run, what it was run with, what the different options are, what everything's set to. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, we see that it'll tell you down here, it found the data um, for your both your forecast and your observation file. And then it'll tell you, OK, I'm going to compute statistics using a block size of 1024. Again, because we didn't set the block inside your MetPlus configuration file, it defaults to whatever's in the default um, configuration file, which is 1024. And it tells you right there it's going to take 24 passes to do that on your grid. Um, and it also warns you that that's going to take quite a while. Um, so maybe increase your block size for the next time. And you'll see. Each of these will run one of 24, two of 24, three of 24, and it goes all the way until it runs that 24 times across your entire grid. Um, so just be aware that if you're experiencing a long runtime, um, that's probably where it's at. Um, you just need to include or increase your block size. Um, the last thing I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to use plot data plane to grab the imagery. And this is just to demonstrate that if you um, want something more than just an NC view of that image and you really want to get that image out, you can do that. Um, right now, I'm going to grab out the root mean squared error. Um, and again, I'm calling the name here by series CNT RMSE um, because this is a NetCDF input file. I have to uh, experience the level with asterisk. And we do it that way. And just doing a quick display of that 2005 file. Um, Yes, and we'll run it in the background here. Um, I'll switch over to that, and this will be the last image I show for you. And then we also want to remember as we take a look at this, this was pre-SIP, so we won't expect much um, across the US, only those areas that at the time, those lead times, um, had precip occurring. 
and most of the U.S. should be near zero for pharmacy. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we see. A lot of the U.S. experiencing a very, very low value here around zero or just above that in the grays. Um, and then um, a lot of precip or a lot of RMSE error um, around here and wherever it rains, we get an idea of where the precip occurred. Um, so don't be afraid to take a look at some of those variables if you need to. Get them out with Plot Data Plane. It's a very simple tool, but a very powerful one when you combine it with something like this. Um, and with that, I can um, take, a, take a moment to look at any questions. It looks like they've been answered. Um, are there any other questions before we adjourn for the day? Um, not a question, more a comment. Um, something that is not covered in uh, the online tutorial is that both stat analysis and um, series analysis support Python embedding. Um, so if you want to see those examples, um, feel free to, to just go ahead and refer to the MetPlus user's guide and look at um, uh, section 5.1, the Met tools, and, and go down to stat analysis and series analysis, and there's examples of how to use, um, use the tools with Python embedding. Okay, it sounds like everything is all set. All right. Well, that concludes our uh, training series today. Thanks for joining us, and see you next week.